a so this chapter <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry I've been trying to start the review and I just burst out laughing every time because it's like it's like a feeling of did this just happen long story short I have a lot of mixed feelings about this chapter I'll start with Obito first Obito is it just me, or does this guy want the Takno Jutsu up his ass? Throughout this entire chapter, Obito is literally asking Naruto to Takno Jutsu him. It's like, first of all, wh why the hell are you even talking? Shouldn't the Tensei be going crazy at this point? Trying to get Madara and Obito off its back? Whatever happened to the Wood Rain? It's like, oh, oh, Neji died. We, we gotta stop. A little bit, little break for dialogue. Can you just imagine that happening in a real war? Like, let's say, World War II, right, for example. The Allies are storming down Normandy, you know, and a, and a German, you know, sees a, a, a French soldier or an American or a Canadian and shoots them, and he's like, oh, that's it for me. Better go talk to them. And again, it might have something to do with the fact that the Ten Tails isn't really fully under Obito and Madara's control. Uh, you know, probably kind of dazed at the moment, like, Rrr! like a wild chicken. That's that's the noise I just did. We do get a gory panel at the beginning, you know, a lot of fodder ninja just, you know, dead, thanks to those splinters. Some of them hanging in the middle of them. It's it's pretty, you know, it, it just it just serves to just let you know how severe this is, even though it is fodder. And then Naruto looks at them and he notices that they're, they're like basically both men and women there. So and then Obito obviously gets reminded of who else but Rin. He's like, I can't hear yo talk no jutsu. Honey boo boo chow. Something interesting, page seven. Look at that panel that's split four ways. Who's that in the background behind Guy and Lee? Tension. We're gonna paddle time. Most of this chapter is just dialogue to begin with, uh, but I did notice that Obito's stepping it up a notch because he really is trying to break Naruto psychologically, uh, as, as acknowledged by Madara. Obito's pretty much asking the question of like, hey Naruto, why, why are you even trying to stop me? Like, my plan would benefit you in the end too, because let's be honest here, you don't have a family, Jiraiya Sensei died, okay, and by the end, all of your comrades are going to be dead because I'm going to kill them. Therefore, by the end, you will be what you truly fear, lonely. So obviously, that's, that's hitting Naruto right in the feels, like hardcore, and so much so that he doesn't respond. Why? Because he's in shock. Naruto's stunned. He doesn't know what to do with himself. And then I see this, this hand in, in the corner panel. And I shit you not, I did not want to turn the page. I was like, the moment I find out whose hand that is, it's it's over for for the pairing debate. So I just want to like you know to enjoy that that final moment without knowing. I turn the page and I see Hinata slapping Naruto. Kind of like something that Kushina would do with Minato, and I'm like, wow. I guess this really is happening. Pretty much seals the deal. If you want to click the link below, it's a link to my very first Naruto review in which I state that if Pain uh, did not kill Hinata by stabbing her with that rod, then it was it was pretty much confirmation, to me at least, that Hinata was going to end up with Naruto. Uh, at that point, it was pretty much obvious to me. Uh, it just took, like, I don't know, like four years or something. She has a very long speech after that, and it's really out of character for her. Like, really out of character. So, we already know where Tenten is, where the fuck is Hinata? If you look at Obito and Kakashi's expression, you can tell they agree with me. Obito's like, ah, uh, like, who, wh where did this girl even come from? And Kakashi's like, uh, Hinata? Is that you? You mean to tell me that all this time, you could talk? She continues on with her speech, leaving everybody in awe. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read it to you, because that, that is her speech. Uh, nobody's touching that fucking speech. That was the speech she was meant to give from the moment Kishimoto designed her. Kind of reminds me of the anime when she's about to sacrifice herself. Uh, you know, pretty much saying, I don't go back on my word. That is my ninja way. And that's only because that is Naruto's ninja way. I have to mention Sakura, like, standing in the back, looking at this, like, in, in shock. Or She might be amazed. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and I don't know why Kishimoto decided to put her in the back. You know, sort of like push her aside for a bit. Uh, I don't think it's right or wrong that he did that. I just think that's that's just what he decided to do. And I see Obito pouting, like at Hinata's words. He's like, not gonna cry, not gonna cry. I'm like, yo, like this fucker wants to get Tuck no Jutsu so bad. Help him out, Hinata. Because in case you haven't figured it out already, 
Hinata has inherited the Talk No Jutsu. And I'm just looking at Obito's face. I can't help but feel bad for him, because he probably must be thinking, I wish I could have had something like that with Rid. My favorite part of the speech is this. Now is the time to stand with me, Naruto-kun. That is the best part of the speech, in my opinion. Why? Because she, she is not saying, now is the time that I stand with you. No, like, you're standing with me, bitch. No more gay crushes on Sasuke. She's turning into Kushina, and then the fox gets in there, and he's like, hey, remember Neji's sacrifice? Uh, if you're gonna be a bitch, might as well let me take over your body. Like I said, even Madara suspects that Obito wants a reply from Naruto, but he doesn't get it. So he's like, enough. You know, I'm done waiting for Takno Jutsu. Let's get the show on the road. And the Jubi is about to do some serious blasting. I don't know if this was part of Shikaku's plan, but B comes in and basically, this is gonna sound really dirty, makes the Jubi swallow two balls. Jubi explosion. And he hits the ground ass first. You could see his little feet like, ah, ah. Still waiting on that third transformation. So the Jubi's having a hard time. And then comes one of the sweetest moments I've ever seen in this entire series. And I'm not just saying that because it's the newest chapter. Actually, yes I am. Throughout all of these debates of who's going to end up with who and this and that and I don't care and all that stuff, one, one point that has been mentioned over and over again is that Hinata, we know how Hinata feels about Naruto, but we don't know how Naruto feels about Hinata. Well, guess what, folks? This chapter... This last chapter of 2012 just changed that. It wasn't just mom and dad, all those people. And we get a panel of the fallen, and it's like, oh, right in the gut, like, oh, emotional stuff. He is the one grabbing her hand. It's not the other way around. And he's like, thanks a bunch, Hinata. My life was never just mine. It's because you've been by my side this whole time. Uh, I'm pretty sure she was stalking you through the trees, but if that's what you remember, Fuck it. And then she says something that kind of takes me out of the moment, because she's like, oh, Naruto's hand is so big, you know, so manly. Like, come on, like, no, no, that, that's a little bit too much. And then, like, in the fact, <laughs> the last page on the side, it says, never letting go of this hand. She's not letting go of it. So what, what happens is that Naruto goes into Bijou mode, and apparently she's going to go into Bijou mode too. He is pumping her with a lot of chakra. I'm just saying. Can, can her system even handle that much chakra? I don't know. Are they going to be doing some Naruhina combos or some shit? And, and was this part of the strategy that, that Shikaku envisioned? You know, that in order for the strategy to work, Naruto would have to be near a Hyuga, somebody with a Byakugan, for, for them to be able to stop the Tentails. We out of time. I want to thank my special guest, the incredible Samuel Jackson.